So now we have a new guest, and um, in this case, you know, small business people do foolish things, you, you know, and, and this next guest did some foolish stuff. The first one is he started his business when his wife was pregnant, <laughs> so no job, you know, <laughs> and you decide to start your business, my friend. Mark, thank you so much for, for being on the show. T- tell everybody the name of your uh, company and exactly what it is you do, and then I'll make fun of you for starting your business at a tough time in your life. <laughs> sounds good, Joel. Uh, uh, it's white tail heating and cooling. We do residential and light commercial HVAC services. And, and so uh, talk a little bit about how you got started. I'm making fun of you, but so many of us small business people, we have that story. You, you know, I mean, if we could have done something different, we would have. But for some reason, life circumstances sent us in the direction to start our small business. So when I read your story, it just uh, reminds me of so many other small business people that I know. So talk a little bit about how you got started. Uh, yes, we were talking about that and how we don't always, if we think about the consequences of just, you know, deciding to start your own business and take off, and, you know, and you think about it later, you're thinking, what was I thinking? Right, right, right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just enjoy it. I enjoy people, and I just was, seemed like I wasn't satisfied. Uh, I wanted to make people happy on my own, and I had a friend who had uh, was building a house and he asked me if I'd do his his heating and just with one house um I decided you know what I think I'm gonna start nice. my own company and nice. and uh my wife was a stay-at-home mom because daycare was expensive and and uh she was pregnant and I went in and quit my job and started doing this house with the only business plan of uh failure's not an option right right <laughs> and uh just kept you know pushing the pavement and and somehow i i've I've kept driving on so talk about the second job you know uh okay you you while you were doing this house you had to be thinking about when you woke up in the morning what is tomorrow going to look like right (laughs) so so i I want people listening to kind of hear your your um your story your process so what was the second job like walk us through how you kept this momentum going um just pure determination and um you know when when i started on my own i i know that uh you know the regular companies get really busy at certain times of the year and i I tried to take advantage of that um, when people want to get their like air fixed and right. and they people are telling them a couple of weeks and they just start going through the phone book because they're they're dying of heat and uh, I took that as my opportunity to go shine for them so that I could increase my word of mouth and um, I did a little bit of begging you know some people <laughs> oh, and, we all do that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know trying to convince different people that hey you know i'm your guy and and getting the chance and and going from there so so let's back up a little bit you don't have to go back to 1962 but let's talk a little bit about how you got in the business of of heating air right so so that's a skill that requires some education and and some experience so talk a little bit about that yes i uh, think of the song the boy named sue my dad is the one that talked me into this and i <laughs> joked with him <laughs> later on that i was gonna go beat him up in the alley there but uh i i didn't really know what i wanted to do i'd got out of the army and and uh my dad says well you know you should go into heating and air conditioning because it's something that people will always need and and i really had no idea what you know i really wanted to do so i ended i thought oh you know yeah he's right you know that's people always need heat people always need air and so i went to a school and and found that i really enjoyed it it was kind of a you know us type of people were never really book smart but we are mechanically smart type of thing and it was just a really good fit for me so i got a question for you about your business what is the one thing that you're most every day when you wake up what is the one thing you're most grateful for about what it is you do what like just pulls at you um, I would say, you know, just trying to take care of people and, and you know, obviously buying a furnace and air is not like buying a TV. It's not a fun, a fun purchase. But, okay. You know, I like to make the process uh, easy on them and, you know, let them know that they're going to be saving money monthly. And, okay. And, you know, just, I just enjoy people and talking to them. And what's really been enjoyable for me is, um, just learning all the different things that people do for a living. Oh, yeah, I so, bet. I mean, 
the there's, stories, there's, right? Yeah, the stories and the different things. Like, wow, I didn't know that was Isn't that kind of cool? And yeah, yeah, you I, walk I out going, that. wow. And, and I just love people. And I, I was born with the gift of gab, Good. which has been very beneficial, owning my own company. That's right. So uh, there we go. It's, just, it's just really cool and uh, make the people feel comfortable that they're uh, doing a good job for them. What's the one thing that when you walk out of a client's a house or establishment that you want them on the back of their mind or the, at the forefront of their mind, what do you want them to walk out with that experience? How, what kind of feeling or what do you want them to think about or, or know or understand? Um, I want them to know that they're, that we stand behind everything that we do. And I always tell them that, uh, you know, for some reason you have a problem. If I don't know about it, I can't take care of you. So, okay. you know, don't be afraid to, to call us and say that, Hey, I got this issue. And, you know, uh, we do our best to not have any callbacks, but I've learned that over the years that sometimes the person sure. that has the problem and you go take care of them and get everything squared away for them, they end up being your biggest cheerleaders. So that, that, I agree with that. I think you should always have raving fans is what you should always do um, in the long run that pays off, uh, it's short and long term. Um, the, um, what is it that separates you from everyone else? Um, I would say that I like to let people know what their price is up front so that there's no surprises okay I and mean, a lot of people are just really taken back you know we all work hard for a living and i'm very understanding of that that a lot of us live check to check and um i i i, I pride myself on not letting them have surprises so I, you understand that they, hey look this is going to be a big but we'll help take care of it or hold our hand type of thing yes make them feel good about this even though it kind of sucks and sometimes it does right you know i yes. mean but you let them know that I, I think that's genuine though where most people come in there and say you've got to get it here's the here's the bill so what uh you come in with a heart it sounds like yes i do and and i always tell people that on my proposal that's the price they're going to pay if i misjudge something you know that's on me You'll still I, eat that. I will not nice. you're a man know, of your word yes i will nice. not come to them and say hey you know we got to add another you know 500 dollars on or something uh, what what they see is what they're going to pay so that they can budget for it you know? that's good i i, I want to be clear chris you know yes. uh, you're not allowed to say sucked and that's ten thousand dollar fine and i'm not paying it brian so i just want to be clear okay. on that let's be let's be very clear okay. he's he's on his own we got yes, your credit card number. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, um, here's here's my question, buddy. Every small business person I know goes through a really bad time. I know your story. In about 2006, 2007, a lot of your business was builders. Obviously, a lot of them started to have challenges, which means you had challenges. Talk a little bit about those challenging times, because there's a lot of small business people out there listening that either have gone through it or will go through it at some point. So to walk, to walk them through some of the challenges that you had and, and how you worked through it. Uh, yes. Um, you know, you, you build a relationship with clients and you know you're getting paid and everything and obviously the economy crash hit a lot of us hard and uh you know you just have to keep fighting on and a lot of people say you know you fail your way to success that's a great statement actually. <laughs> and yes. uh you learn from your mistakes and you don't give up and uh, i've always had this you know never give up attitude so when the economy crash happened, um, you know, and of course, being a guy, you you feel like, you know, you're supposed to support your family and everything. And when that is in danger, it even gives you more of a drive. So I was, you know, willing to do whatever yeah. I had to do. And, and, and that was remarkable. If somebody wants to reach you, how can they do it? Uh, they can reach us. Uh, check out our website at whitetailheating.com. Uh, 